all right youtube so today's gonna be part two of the engine build which is uh how to installing the rods to the pistons how to gap the rings how to install the wrist pins uh torques for the rod bolts how to install them into the engine block and what else i think that's pretty much it move forward uh i do want to note a couple things before um in my previous video that i didn't mention uh the first thing i didn't get to mention was uh the engine assembly loop, this is a very important whenever you're putting your bearings onto the crankshaft. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put the engine lubrication on the journals like this and spread it around. And then you're also gonna do the same thing on the bearings on the surface, just spread it around. So that's one thing. The second thing I wanted to touch base on was torquing these down. So when you torque these down, um, you're gonna to wanna to do them in three sequences, uh, three passes pretty much. You're gonna to wanna to do uh, 23 foot pounds the first pass, so 23 pounds on one, two, three, four, five, six, and et cetera. And then you're gonna go around and do it again at 47 pounds. And then you're gonna do uh, a third time, which is your final torque, which is 70 foot pounds. So just an FYI on that. What we're using today are this little rubber mallet. Uh, of course, your, your torque wrenches, breaker bar, regular ratchet, some feeler gauges. You can pick these up at AutoZone. Uh, piston ring expander pliers. Uh, really, you don't really need them, but I just thought I want to get them because it might help you guys out. For me, I, it didn't help me out that much. I just did it manually. It's to me that's easier. Uh, piston ring compressor. Uh, this is going to be an 11 millimeter uh, toll point. ARP assembly lube, engine assembly lube, uh, plastic gauge again, because you're gonna wanna check the oil clearances. And most importantly, you're gonna want this dude right here. This is a ring filer. Once again, I don't have, you know, everything like is pretty much assembled, like I said in the previous video. Uh, this rod I left out so I can just specifically record and show you guys uh, what I'm talking about. And right now what I'm gonna show you guys is how to assemble uh, the piston two rod together. You have these, uh, at least these pistons. Um, you're gonna need to put in the rod. You're gonna need to connect the rod and the piston together first before putting in the rings. Why? Is because you see that little, see how it's like that notch is right there? You can't put the rings in and then put, you can't put the wrist pin in afterwards. You need to put the rod and the piston together first before putting in the rings. So just to clarify that for you guys. That dot indicates that goes towards the front of the engine. So the crank snout, like right there, it's going to be going towards the front of the crank. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and lube up the wrist pin. You're going to also lube up the inside walls of the pistons and the inside walls of the, the connecting uh, rod. Push in one of these retaining clips. The way how you do it is you're going to have, it's going to be an open butt like that. And the way how I did it was I pointed it in inwards like that where it's open and then I held it in place and used my other thumb and pushed it inwards and then it'll snap in place. Once it snaps in place, you're gonna wanna go ahead and, and get the rod lined up down there. You wanna get it lined up with the piston holes and you're gonna wanna push in the wrist pin, okay? And if you lube it up really, really well, it should go in pretty easy. And then you're just gonna do the same thing on this side. You're gonna go ahead and pit, get the Painting clip and you're gonna lock it in place and then your rod and piston will be installed um again if i had all of this disassembled i would show you guys from scratch but unfortunately it's not like that i i just want to make sure i can you know deliver some video for you guys uh, requested videos all right guys so i know usually most pistons have a, a ring set of five but whenever you're dealing with the case of when the piston starts to go into the wrist pin bore you're gonna need it what it's called an oil support rail and what that is is this ring right here what this does is it makes sure it has support on the oil uh the oil ring so it's gonna be your oil ring top oil ring bottom uh your top ring and how you know you can tell it's a top ring a bottom ring or your second ring is all right so it's really hard to show you guys what i'm talking about but at the end of this ring there's a scraper for the oil this is how you know this is going to be your bottom ring your middle ring and then 
this is how you also know this is gonna be your top ring because this one doesn't have a scraper. Also, another quick tip, there it is gonna have a letter on it like in this one, it's gonna have a N. When it has a letter on it, that means it goes up towards uh, the cylinder or towards the heads, okay? So just to clarify that, these, these rings, they don't have significations about pointing up or down, you can just install them. But these two rings, you're gonna need them uh, facing upwards with the letter. Uh, another tip is the oil rings are really, really thin and the top and bottom compression rings, they're really thick. Next, I wanna talk to you guys about gaps, okay? So ring gaps. So whenever you get your, your pistons, uh, Seiko's gonna be sending you uh, a bunch of white boxes that contain the rings in them. So be like four boxes of them with ring sets. And on that box is gonna have a pink paper Save that pink paper because that pink paper has pretty much a, a, multipl a multiplication problem for you on how to determine uh, how to gap your rings, okay? So save that little piece of paper because if you don't have that paper, you're not gonna know what, what will Seiko work or recommends on ring gap. It oil rail supports, and there, yes, there is a specific way how they go on. You see that little dimple right there on the bottom of it? You're gonna want that dimple between the the wrist pins or the, where they will go okay it can be on either side no matter but you need that dimple facing down towards the wrist pin okay all right so i just want to make one more note there is a certain way to install these rings okay like you have to clock them a specific way what i'm going to do now is since we're going to have to gap these rings we're going to need to use a cylinder bore in order to do that, so I'm gonna lubricate the cylinder walls with some oil. That way it doesn't scratch it whenever we're taking the rings and putting them in and taking them out. This is our second ring. We're gonna start with this one. We're gonna pinch this right here, pinch it down. Like that. Bring this up a little. Now, Before you take a measurements, make sure the ring, when it's inside the cylinder walls, uh, make sure you square it up properly. You can do this either by getting a cylinder square tool, or you can just go ahead and use a piston and just get it down nice and even all across, which is what I'm doing. Uh, just a quick note. All right, so if your gauge it has multiple, uh, multiple sizes that you can measure with. Uh, for mine, for this little one, it goes at the point zero two five, and then this one goes at the point zero five zero. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use this right here. You see how it has the gap right there already to begin with. You're gonna want to use your feeler gauge. Figure, uh, go from whatever number you think it's closest to, and you're gonna slide it in. If it's too loose, go in just like that. And then if it's too thick, it should. Let me see here. It should have a hard time going in. But in my case, it's actually just perfect. So that's what I'm aiming for, 0 0.025. And it goes pretty straight in. So I don't need to mess with this ring, luckily. Um, another thing is whenever you're gapping your rings, please make sure that this right here, where it it butts together please make sure that they're perpendicular if they're not perpendicular which is like you know straight then you're gonna need to save some material out to make it straight because you don't want it to be like at a v-shape because then you're just letting you it's not a correct seal got done sizing this ring right here and this ring needs to be shaved a little bit so this is where the ring file comes in handy because now you don't want to set it up just like this. By the way, this part's like only like 30 bucks, 40 bucks on Amazon. You can get it anywhere really, but you want to make sure it has a good stone. Anyways, this is how you set it up. And then this wheel right here, I want to make a quick note. This wheel, whenever you're grinding the ring, you're going to want to make sure you're coming back this way, okay? Don't, don't go forward, come backwards like this. So you're going to want to set it up like this. See how you have these two little supports right here? These little, little, I don't know what to call them, but these little rails right here. You're gonna want to line up on that. You know, like that. 
and I have that part of the ring on the file ready to go. And then this is how you're gonna hold it. For me, I hold it like this. After filing a good, what, 15, 20 minutes, I finally reached my target. So now I'm ready to put the rings on and uh, install the piston into the cylinder. All right, so earlier I was talking about that uh, that little scraper and you can finally see it in this video. See that little scraper on the edge? That always faces down because what it does is it's scraping all the oil on the cylinder walls, pushing it down. All right, I'm going to see if I can show you guys uh, how to install the piston rings with the ring expander. So it's in the ring expander, look just like that. Okay. All right, you're going to press it out like that. I don't like doing it like this because see how much it stretches out? I don't like that. Um, let's see. Slide it up. And it's in, just like that. See, the way how I do it is like this. Again, make sure the end's facing up. This is how I like to do it. And I do this wrong with rings. I like to line it up, right? It's lined up. Sorry if you guys can't see it. I'm gonna try my best to show you, but lined up and I got it in there and all I'm doing is I'm going around the piston a little bit and make it put in my thumb on the pressure on it and at the very end I just slide it down just like that and it goes in in my opinion way better some more oil and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put oil all over the pistons okay wherever it's gonna Wherever the cylinder walls is gonna to touch right now, we're gonna put oil all over it. So here, put some more oil in here. You want it nice and lubricated because you don't wanna you don't wanna go in and force in the the piston with no lubrication, or else you might break a ring, or even worse, uh, scratch the cylinder walls, and, and then you're not gonna have a perfect seal. All you do with this is you wrap it around the cylinder or the piston like that, and then it comes with this little angle or tool, I guess you could say, and that's to tie in it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna tie in it all the way to where the rings are compressed together. That way you can drop it in the cylinder wall as smooth as possible. And then you're gonna use a rubber mallet right here to push it down. But you're gonna want to make sure you don't you you just have to make sure that you don't force it down. You just got you that's just to help you push it down. Oh. All right, so then set up and then give it a pop and then it should go down. And then this is what it's going to look like whenever you have all four pistons in, all facing forward, of course. And then push this guy down a little bit. And then don't forget, before we push it all the way down, we're going to put some uh, assembly lube on it. That way the bearings are, that way the bearings have some lubrication on for a startup. So I'm going to send a little one here. Spread it around really good. All right, so when you're putting on the rod caps, make sure everything is lined up correctly. Those That notch lines up with the other notch, which is right here. And also, if you don't know that, the way how you can also tell is on the rod cap, there's a number. You gotta line that number up with the number on the, on the rod itself. And it'll line up perfectly fine. Just like that. All right, time to get the AIP bolts. Don't forget, AIP assembly lube, and then torque them down. We're gonna go down to 25 foot pounds, and then we're also gonna be doing uh, 55 degrees of angle as all well. Right, from here, all you have to do now is just get the angle gauge, and then you're gonna do 55 degrees of, uh, well, for this particular rod set, it's uh, 25 foot pounds plus 55 degrees of angle. 
And after that, you're done with building the bottom end. Just gotta put the ladder frame on, which I have over there, the oil pump. And then we can put the heads on and timing chain and then we'll throw it back in the engine bay. I do wanna point out though, that there is a correct way of checking your, uh, if the rod bolt is torn down correctly or not. And with every, every time you get a rod bolt, it comes with a rod bolt stretch gauge uh, calculation. And what you need to do is you need to buy a rod bolt stretch gauge which is like a hundred to $200, like somewhere around there. And basically what it is, is it has your circle right here. And then you put the tool under here, which is like a little uh, dimple down here. And it gives you the measurement of the stretch. And that's how you determine if they're, if they're torqued down correctly or not. But that's pretty much it. Bottom end is assembled. You have your crank in, your main caps, your thrust washers, your rings, your pistons, your rods. All of it is set. All right, so that's gonna be it for part two. Uh, I guess part three, I'm gonna show you guys how to throw on the ladder frame, uh, the oil pump, put on the timing chain, and then uh, put on the rear main seal and stuff like that, little stuff. Um, and then we'll go ahead and jump on to doing the heads and we'll be done. So see you next video, guys.